Hello students, this is your economics coach Pratik Bhaseen back with a new chapter. Today we will be discussing about chapter 7th of Indian economic development for class 11th. Chapter's name is employment. You must have heard about employment, it is always in the news. You must be wondering what is employment, who is actually known as employed or who is a worker. What is the quantity of people that are employed in India? Similarly, what are the number of people that are unemployed? Who is considered as an unemployed? What are the reasons for unemployment? Who collects the data for unemployment? In today's chapter, we will be discussing about all these issues that are being faced by our country. So let's start this chapter with the issue that what is employment? So employment is an act of earning one's livelihood whatever a person does to earn his livelihood, whatever activity he does is known as a form of employment. Now for being employed, you need to be a worker. So who is a worker? In economics, we mean that a worker is an individual who does an activity to earn livelihood and contributes to the GDP of the country. This also raises the availability of goods and services in the economy. Now who all are included in the definition of worker? First of all, any person who is being employed under an employer is known as a worker. Let's suppose a doctor gets his job in a hospital. He will be considered as a worker because he has been employed through an employer. Now let's suppose that doctor decides to open up a private clinic. Will he be considered as a worker? The answer is yes. He will be considered as a worker because he is a self-employed person. Similarly, workers who are temporarily out of work. Let's suppose in my factory, I have a worker who is facing some illness. I tell him to take rest for a week or two he will be considered as a worker. Similarly, in my factory, there is one more worker who wants to celebrate a festival with his family in his hometown. Now, will he be considered as a worker if he is out of work? The answer is yes, because he is temporarily out of work, not permanently. Similarly, helpers who help other workers are also included in the definition of a worker. Let's take an example that you are being visited by an electrician. He is being accompanied by a helper. So both of them are workers because the electrician is self-employed and the person accompanying him is a helper and he is also considered as a worker. Let's move ahead. Now let's talk about the issue. Are housewives or mothers who are not into some productive employment considered as a worker? The answer is no. In India, most of the women take care of households. They indulge into cleaning, washing, cooking, etc. But they do this for love, care and affection for their family, not to earn their livelihood. Hence, they are not considered workers. I know it's strange, but yes, most of our women are indulged into it that is why India is not able to productively utilize its workforce. Now let's move ahead. Why do we need to understand workforce? Why do we need to study the workforce? What is the point of studying? So the point of studying workforce is, first of all, it helps into manpower planning. It helps us to understand that how many people are employed in which sector. It also helps us to understand the issue of child labor to understand why are children being employed and why aren't they going to school. So this is the main issue, that is why we study the term employment. Now let's move ahead and understand what is the total workforce that is employed in our country. You will be surprised to know that in 2011-12, around 473 million workers were employed in India. That is 47.3 crore workers were employed in India. We can distribute or classify these number of workers according to area as well as gender. So according to area, 
around 25% of the total workforce is employed in the urban sector. Similarly, 75% of the workforce is employed in the rural sector. So, rural sector generates more employment as compared to urban sector. We will also analyze this that why is rural sector generating more employment. Similarly, on the basis of gender, the workforce is divided into males and females. So, 70% workforce is contributed or dominated by males. And the total workforce, 30% part is females. That is, of the total workforce, only 30% are females. So, there is a gender gap in the employment pattern of India. So, let us move ahead and come to the topic that why does a rural area generates more employment. So, there are many reasons, wide variety of reasons that why does rural sector generates more employment. The first and the foremost reason is that rural people lack resources, there are limited resources. So, they do not have much options available to them and they have to work. Also, there is lack of educational facilities available in the rural areas due to which they do not want to come to urban areas for higher education. That is why they indulge into employment at an early age. Similarly, they have very less economic resources to send their children to urban areas to study further. Now, let us move ahead and understand the ratios that are used to study the employment situation in India. So, in India, we use two types of ratios. The first one is worker population ratio. This ratio depicts that how many workers are available per 100 population. So, the formula for this is number of workers upon population into 100. So, higher ratio means there are more number of workers as compared to 100 people in the population. So, higher ratio also depicts that more people are engaged into economic activities. This also shows that the GDP is growing at a higher rate because more people are employed. Similarly, we have one more ratio which is labor force participation rate. The formula for this is labor force upon population into 100. Labor force in short means those who are employed and those who are willing and able to work or those who are looking for work. So, the difference between workforce and labor force is that the workforce only include those people who are actually employed, but labor force includes those people who are employed as well as who are looking for work that is those who are unemployed. So, we can derive a formula from this that is workforce equal to labor force minus unemployed people. Now, let us move ahead and analyze the workforce structure in the total population. So, if we analyze it sector wise, we find that the most number of people are working in the primary sector. So, this data which I am going to talk about is from 2011-12. So, we understand that primary sector employs around 48.9 percent of the workforce. That is almost half of the workforce is working in the primary sector. Similarly, in secondary sector, around 24.3 percent of the population is employed or the workforce is employed. This means around one-fourth of the workforce is employed in the secondary sector. Moving ahead, we have tertiary sector which employs around 26.8 percent of the workforce. So, totaling it to 100 percent, we find that most people are employed in the primary sector. This is because in India, most of the areas are still rural areas and the occupation in the rural areas is still agriculture. So, agriculture plays a dominant role in the occupational structure in India. That is why it employs the most of the workforce. Similarly, secondary sector employs only 24.3 percent of the workforce. This means that India has not been able to industrialize itself as it would have been if the industrialization had been done earlier. So, this is why a small proportion of the workforce works in the industrial or the secondary sector. Similarly, the contribution of the tertiary sector has increased year by year, but it is still very low. It is only 26.8 percent. This means that there is growth of educational opportunities in India, 
but it is still far behind so india is mainly an agrarian economy because as we know half of the workforce works under the primary sector now let's move ahead and talk about the growth structure of employment in the past 70 years so we have noticed that there is always an increase in gdp but in some years the gdp growth rate has also declined but you will be surprised to know that the job growth rate has not matched up to the mark of the gdp growth rate in all the years after 1950 we have found that the gdp growth rate was higher than the job growth rate this is known as jobless growth after 1991 that is after the introduction of economic reforms this situation worsened and what happened was it led to a situation of jobless growth jobless growth is a phenomena when the gdp growth rate and the job growth rate gap increases that is when gdp growth rate increases and the employment growth rate decreases which leads to widening the gap between both of them this is known as jobless growth india faced jobless growth because of growing imports and also replacement of people through mechanization many people were replaced by machines this has led to this jobless growth situation so our government should take some steps to reduce this situation and generate more employment for the public this will bring in prosperity for india now let's move ahead and study what are the types of employment that are seen in india in india basically employment is divided into two types the first one being self employment and the second being wage employment wage employment is further divided into two parts the first is regular employment and the second is casual employment so let's first understand what is self employment you will be surprised to know that around 52% of the workforce is self employed self employment is a situation where the owner invests from his own pocket that is he uses his own land labor capital so that he can work so he invests his own resources his risk is very high although he gets a fair amount of profits from that but on the other hand under wage employment the employee is not required to invest from his own pocket around 48% of the total workforce is employed under wage employment this wage employment as we understood earlier is divided into two parts the first is regular employment and the second is casual employment wage employment constitutes around 48% of the total workforce due to which the regular employment has only 18% of the share the rest 30% is casual employment this is a very disheartening situation for our country because under regular employment the employees get regular salaries but under casual employment the employees do not get regular salaries they are not even assured that they'll get work tomorrow or not under regular employment the employees get social security but under wage employment they don't have any social security you will be surprised to know that after 1950s the proportion of the casual employees has increased in the total workforce this phenomena is known as casualization of workforce this is not good for india because the more the number of casual employees in the workforce are the lesser people will get the benefits of social security or regular wages they'll have to face unemployment more number of times so our government should take some steps so as to decrease the number of people employed in casual employment and shift them into wage employment or self employment now let's move ahead and talk about the formal and informal sector you must have studied that the employment situation in india is basically composed majorly of informal sector so let us first understand what is the difference between formal and informal sector formal sector organizations are those organizations which employ 10 
or more people and all the government organizations come under formal sector may it be employing two or three employees even then it will come under the formal sector so under formal sector all government organizations and those private organizations which employ 10 or more people contribute to the formal sector similarly informal sector those organizations are there where the number of employees is less than 10 so it is contributed only by all those private organizations which employ less than 10 people under formal organization there is a monitoring authority that is the government but under informal organization there is no monitoring authority formal organizations employ workers who are known as formal workers similarly workers working in informal organizations are known as informal workers formal workers are entitled to social security benefits but informal workers are deprived of that benefits similarly formal workers can form their own trade unions and fight for their interest but informal workers cannot do so they cannot fight for their interest and cannot raise their voices against exploitation by the employers you must be surprised to understand that in india around 473 million workers are employed out of this the formal sector employs only 30 million people that is only 3 crore people out of 47.3 crores are employed in the formal sector but on the other hand in the informal sector around 443 million people are employed that is around 44.3 crore people are employed in the informal sector so this is why in india we call that our workforce is informalized that is the proportion of informal workers is more than that of the formal sector our government should try to take steps to decrease the number of workers in the informal sector and shift them into the formal sector now let's move on to our next topic which is unemployment unemployment is a situation where a person who is able and willing to work at the existing wage rate do not get work that means that he is looking for work and he wants to work but he is not able to get work this is a very disheartening situation because that person won't be able to earn his livelihood this would deteriorate his standard of living so what are the types of unemployment in india in india the unemployment is basically divided into three parts the first one is open unemployment under this type of unemployment the person is sitting idle and he seems not to work he wants to work but he is not getting work these type of unemployed people are very easy to identify because they are not working but on the other hand one more type of unemployment is there which is known as disguised unemployment this unemployment is very difficult to identify because under this people are working but their contribution to the total production is next to zero that means if they are removed from that productive activity the production remains unchanged most of this unemployment is found in the rural areas where a farm which requires only two people to work actually around eight or nine people of the family are working on it but it is not leading to greater production so the rest seven extra people those who are working in that farm are disguisedly unemployed the main problem in india is of disguise unemployment because most of the workforce as we already discussed are working under the primary sector one more type of unemployment is seasonal unemployment this type of unemployment is also faced by the primary sector that is the agricultural sector because agriculture is a seasonal activity so after harvesting season till the next sowing season the workers are unemployed so our government should also try to take some steps to generate employment for those people who are working under the primary sector because for most of the time they are unemployed now let's move ahead and study so what are the sources of unemployment data that how does government gets the data on unemployment so 
the government gets data on unemployment from three sources. The first one being census. Census, as we already know, is takes place after every 10 years. So the government gets some data on unemployment from those census. Similarly, there is National Sample Survey Organization. This organization conducts sample surveys every year. Some part of unemployment is also provided by the National Sample Survey Organization. Similarly, we have one more institution which is Directorate General of Employment and Training, DGET. So from the past 30 years, it has also been looking on the labor markets. It also collects the data on employment and unemployment. Although the data obtained from all these three sources differs a bit from each other, but the government uses data from all these sources to find different types of unemployment in different sectors. Now moving ahead, how does the government tackle the problem of unemployment? So the government generates either direct employment or indirect employment. Direct employment means that the government employs people in its PSUs, that is the public sector undertakings. So you might be seeing that railways employs a large number of workforce under it. It is the largest employer in India. So this is a type of direct employment. Similarly, indirect employment refers to a situation whereby a PSU expands and takes services from some private sectors. So let's suppose that the government wants to build highways. So under this, the government will take these services from many private vendors. This will generate employment for the public indirectly. Similarly, the government also launches many employment generation programs which generates employment for the public. Like Mahatma Gandhi National Rural Employment Guarantee Act. Similarly, Swan Jayanti Gram Swarozgar Yojana and Swan Jayanti Shehri Rozgar Yojana. We have already discussed about these programs under the chapter Poverty. Now, let's see what are the causes of unemployment. Why does unemployment occur? So the first and the foremost cause of unemployment is population explosion. In India, the jobs grow at a very less rate, but the population grows at a very high rate due to which there is unemployment in the economy and the labor market is not able to absorb the labor force properly. So we should try to control the population. Now, the second point for this is poor state of agriculture. Ever since British arrived into India, agriculture has been suffering. Even after 1950, when the government took some steps, like it brought green revolution, it also introduced land reforms, agriculture has not been able to cope up with the previous exploitation that had been done by the Britishers. Similarly, after 1991, as we already studied, no initiatives were taken for the agriculture sector, due to which a huge chunk of population remains unemployed due to poor state of agriculture. The third point is poor state of education system. In India, the education system is basically theoretical in nature. It has nothing to do with employable skills. Our government should look into the education system which provides more employable skills. Similarly, poor state of industrial growth is also a major factor of a cause of unemployment. In India, the industrialization has not been up to the mark due to which the unemployment is very high. Similarly, decline of small scale and cottage industries has also led to unemployment. As we already understood that, small scale industries and cottage industries are labor intensive industries which employs a huge amount of labor force. But because of their decline, the unemployment situation has actually worsened. Similarly, there was low investment by the government in infrastructure due to which unemployment occurred. Now let us understand the measures to reduce unemployment. The first measure is that population should be controlled. The government should apply rules and regulation or introduce some laws which controls population. Similarly, the government should look into agricultural sector and induce some strategies which gives a boost 
to the agricultural sector. Similarly, the education system should be revamped and some subjects should be included or some skills should be imparted to the child which gives him more employment opportunities right after he graduates from school. Similarly, the government should undertake rapid industrialization. The government should introduce some policies which actually paves way for many industries to set up their industries in India. Similarly, the government should also invest some money into infrastructure which provides more employment to the public. The government should also make some policies for small scale industries and cottage industries so that they develop, boom and provide employment to the people. Now let's summarize what all we studied in this chapter. In this chapter we learned about what is employment, who is a worker, who are unemployed people, what is the type of unemployment. We also studied about casualization of workforce. We also understood what is informalization of workforce. We also discussed about the jobless growth which is a sheer problem for India. We also discussed about the causes and measures of unemployment. Now I hope you were able to cope up with this chapter. I will see you in the next chapter. Till then, please stay safe.